Now looking at the total assets minus total liabilities. Look at those liabilities. What am I saying? And this got me by surprise. I saw this and I'm just like, there's no way that this is right. There is no way that this is right. Look at that grade. What? That is absolutely crazy, guys. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer requested fundamental analysis video. And today, guys, we got the final company that you guys recommended, and it is none other than INMD. Now, I'm not going to make the joke like I did last time. I just spun the wheel even though there was one company. It's overdone. It's overdone. So, today, guys, we're going to take a look at this company. It was brought up by, well, let's see. It was brought up by John Ward. Here is his comment. And uh, I think I've done this one before here on the channel. I don't remember, though. So, that'll be interesting. And, uh, yeah, guys, that concludes June's list. Now, we do have a few for July. However, well, when you guys see this, it will be Friday. So, we're going to have a live stream in about hour and a half right uh two hours sorry two two and a half hours so we're gonna cover guys the earnings for jp morgan wells fargo and city which just came out today it would have already been out for several hours now since you guys have seen this so we're gonna cover that in just a few hours so just make sure to stay tuned if you guys would like to see us covering those earnings so again because earnings season starting we're gonna have to put a pause on these recommendations so if you do have some again all these calculators are available for free. Do not wait for me to actually do it. That's why all these calculators are for free, okay? So understand that. If you do have a recommendation, if you do recommend it, it'll go on the list and we'll probably get to it by August, all right? So not August, sorry. We'll probably get to it by like September because yeah, uh, earning season is usually massive. So anyways, with that said, let's get started with the company INMD. And here we have the company website. Wow, okay, so the first thing that I log in is I just see this chick staring at me. All right, well, thanks. Great. Man, at least they know how to get clientele, if I do say so myself. Anyways, um, I don't remember this company. I really don't. In mode, um, it says, In mode's innovative technologies provide superior results for your patients. Treatments for your face, body, skin, and women's wellness. Okay. I, again, I, I think I've done it before, but I don't remember. So, so let's actually find out what they do in their company profile. We got over here. In mode LT designs, develops, manufactures, and markets minimally invasive aesthetic medical products based on its proprietary radio frequency, assisted lipolysis, and deep subdermal fractional radio frequency technologies in the United States and internationally. Huh? I have no idea. I, I know what lipolysis is. I think it's just like the breakdown of fats, but um, I have no idea exactly what they do. The company offers minimal invasive... What does that mean? Aesthetic medical products for various procedures, such as lipo... Ah, oh, there it is. There it is, liposuction with simultaneous skin tightening, body and face contouring. Okay, that's what I figured. I'm like, lipolysis, skin care. I, is this like a... Like a... Like plastic surgery kind of i know i know liposuction isn't plastic surgery but you, you get my point though that kind of industry and it actually is they are in the healthcare sector that's what kind of ticked me off as well so yeah this is a israeli company very very interesting to say the least okay all right let's jump now into their earnings because they did have it on may 2nd eps normalized actual 52 cents beat by four cents eps gap actual 47 cents beat by three cents and revenue 106.07 million dollars which is a beat again by 267 million dollars now when it comes into the next earnings you can see it is on july a lot of companies are on july 27th my lord so many companies i've seen they're all like on july 27th what day is july 27th actually i mean july 27th uh that's a thursday all right, well, I guess there's a lot of companies releasing earnings then. But you can see here that there's only two analysts looking at this. And in the past 90 days, both of them to the upside. So might be interesting. Now, let's come into the calculator. We got the ticker for INMD. Market cap of $3.75 billion. A PE of 22.52 with a current share price of $45.19. Now, 
I believe, uh, John, when you asked me this, I believe the PE was much lower. I believe the PE was like a 15. Or, I don't know if you're looking at the trailing total months or the forward. But, we can see here on the graph on the one year, they're up 60.76%. Year to date, wow. Year to date, 28 point, wow. Oh my lord. Alright, alright. You can see here that on the 52 week range, the lowest point was $26.10. And... We're essentially near 52 week highs. Now, in the past year to date, you can see that this was, wow, look at this. This thing was down, was it lower than 30 bucks at one point? I thought I saw lower than, yeah. Take a look at that, guys. On March 20th, wow, when the whole thing was, with, with, with the banks was happening. Granted, again, Israeli company, not I'm pretty sure insulated when it comes to this, but I guess you could say it does affect it, right? Look at this, sub 30, $29.72. All right, now the current price, which is again very, very near 52 week highs, I'm looking at this and I'm screaming caution, right? I'm screaming caution, but we'll see what the fundamentals actually tell us. Now, come back into the discounted free cash flow calculator spreadsheet. We can see that, well, they don't pay the dividend, which means all of this free cash flow is going straight to themselves, and this five year average free cash flow is 106, and last year's free cash flow is 180. So it's moving in the right direction, but are they just blips? Let's find out right now. So let's take a look at the net income. We got five years ago of 22.4 million to look at this. One year ago of 161.5 million. That is an increase of 621% on the five year. Now, this is actually not looking too bad, all except for the fact that there is a massive, massive jump from three to two years ago. COVID related, sure, but the problem is it's still a massive spike. And even though as of one year ago, they're somewhat in line with that of two years ago, which is again, it did 165 billion. You can see that it has come down from 165 down to 161.5. So just keep that in mind. And again, we have seen companies where they had two outliers and then it just comes back down to the median. So keep that in mind that it looks good, but that kind of jump is not something I like. So for that reason, I'm going to have to give the, I'm sorry, I have to give this, I would say, I'm not going to give it too bad, but I'm going to give this, I would say, like a 60%. Looking now into the free cash flow, we had the exact same kind of situation. Five years ago of 36.5 million to one year ago of 180 million, increase of 393% with an average of $106.14 million. Okay, so looking at this graph, we could see the massive jump three to two years ago. Now, unlike the net income, they did continue this upward trajectory as of one year ago, right? From 174 to 180 problem is i don't know if this is going to continue so you got to keep that in mind guys again i have shown here several several companies on the channel where you see this kind of growth pretty consistent right pretty consistent five four and three yeah it's all right spike three years ago spike two years ago and then it comes down like it comes down literally the, the following year so just keep that in mind that it can't happen will it happen i don't know this is where again you have to take a look at this by yourselves, right? I'm just looking at this from a surface level. I'm just giving you guys my basic opinion. But honestly, when it comes to the free castle, it is not too bad. It really isn't. Just the problem is, is that jump. So I'm actually going to give this a little bit higher than that of the income because it didn't go down from two to one year ago. I'm going to give this, I would say, I would say like a 65%. It's looking, it's it's good it's just not i don't like the jumps man those jumps are horrendous for me looking at the revenue this one's actually interesting because this is by far one of the most perfect graphs i have seen when it comes to the increasing rate like it looks almost like perfect now it's still a pretty big jump from three to two years ago but nonetheless though it's still i don't necessarily know how to put it it's a really nice looking graph even though it is a pretty big jump five years ago of 100 million to one year ago of 454.3 million increase of 353.4 percent now again we see that massive jump from three to two years ago and look at that and even another big jump by around like 100 million dollars from two to one year ago is this sustainable will this continue i do not know so i'm gonna have to give the I'll give this a 70. You know what? I'll give this a 70 just because it's not looking too bad. The outlier is there, but it's not too bad, right? So no downwards anywhere. It's looking good. Honestly, it really isn't looking too bad. Now looking at the total assets minus total liabilities. <laughs> that graph 
graph is amazing. That graph is amazing. It hits it every single time. No major outliers you can clearly see consistently growing. This is amazing. Guys, this is an amazing graph. And on top of that, look at this. Average total ass is 461.34. Look at those liabilities. What am I saying? 59.6? That's nothing. Bro, I know in your comment you said, are you missing something? Because the liability, they have like no liabilities. They have like no debt. Yeah, they have like no debt. Guys, this difference, assets minus liability, the average, $401.74 million. I get that there are a lot of companies within the billions, but that's, we don't look at that, right? We don't look at that. We wanna see this kind of growth. We wanna see them holding their liabilities under control. I love this graph. Honestly, I really, really do, 100%. 100% beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And this got me by surprise. I saw this and I'm just like, there's no way that this is right. There is no way that this is right. I know the mans just said they have no, no debt. This is crazy. This right here, what you guys are seeing right here. I have never seen that. I have never seen that. Every single cash flow minus the liabilities is in the positive and increasing. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> That's just so crazy. So right off the bat, this is 100, right? This is 100. This is so rare. The fact that their cash flow exceeds their liabilities, bro. And look at that. After paying that, as of one year ago, they still have $90.2 million. That's insane. Man, the average is a pop. You know what? I don't even know why I keep rambling. Guys, this is, can I, I'm about to add like an extra zero. <laughs> that's next to zero. That's that's such a perfect. It really is so good. It's so so good. Now, what isn't too good, unfortunately, is the shares outstanding. They're issuing shares very consistently, but you have some instances here of it actually coming down. Now, we got five years ago of fifty three point four million shares to today of eighty three point two. That is a massive increase. Fifty five point eight one percent all right on the five year that's pretty big previous to the current year it's an increase of 25 now i guess there is hope i guess you could say as you can see here from two to one year ago they did bring it down and even from one year ago to today they increased it but you can see it's less than one percent so i'm looking at this and i'm just like man that's really sad because i mean man when it comes to the maybe this is where Maybe this is how they're funding all of their debts, honestly. Maybe they're just issuing shares, right? Issuing shares, and, we're, and they're like, they don't pay out a dividend. So they're like, we're lowering our debts. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We're, we're, we're surviving. We are lowering our debts. So if that's the case, then absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So is it strategic? I don't necessarily know. 55.81% is massive. But you can see here the consolidation from two to today. So... I'm going to give, I'm going to give this a bad grade, but I'm going to give this, I would say at around like a 50%. I really do, I really do hope this graph actually gets a whole lot better. And lastly, when it comes to the cash clearance, they're currently held 93 million with an average of $66.15 million. Look at that grade. What? That is absolutely crazy, guys. I, wow, right on the money. That hit right on the money. Oh my God. We got the net income, 60%, free cash flow, 65, revenue, 70, assets, mass liabilities, perfect. Cash flow, mass liabilities, forget about it. And shares of standing at 50%. Guys, it's a decent company, honestly, it really is. And even the profit metrics don't necessarily scream, oh my God, this is horrible. No, it's more of just like caution, right? Caution. Hey, they've had two outliers, careful. That's literally it, 70%? really really good right it's a c it passes i like anything above 70 right just like school and it hit 70 percent. and again the profit metrics were that low eh, lower ish kind of because of the fact that of the outliers but honestly you could make the case that no they're perfectly fine and if that's the case you could make the grades higher and it will probably be higher the main issue i see with this is the shares are standing they keep issuing shares but Let's actually see if at the current share price being very, very near 52 week highs, is it a good price to buy at right now? And here we have the discounted free cash flow. And right off the bat, not inputting anything, we got $62.54. Not adjusting for debt, and adjusting for debt, they have no debt. 126. Current share price is 45. Even though it's a 52 week highs, the calculator is saying, 
this thing can go even higher. Now, here's the problem, right? Here's a problem. The shares are standing. What is it going to be in the future? Major, major problem. But let's input some of these numbers. We got over here, Seeking Alpha's growth assumptions, their revenue is expected to grow at almost 20%. That's crazy. So I'm not going to put that. All right. You know, I got when it's crazy numbers like that. I don't like it. I like to be more, uh, I guess, conservative when it, when it comes to these numbers, because if the conservative numbers make sense, then the, the 20% would be just, you know, oh my God, like just crazy. Right. So that's why I like to be a little bit more conservative when it comes to my numbers. Therefore, I'm going to put Honestly, I'm going to put 10%, let's put 12%, and let's put 14% for the revenues. Now, for the predicted share buyback, here's the problem. They're issuing shares, right? 55%. You can make the excuse that they're going to stop. I have not read their earnings report. If you guys have, John, if you have, please let me know. And if they do plan on stopping issuing shares and they plan on just keeping it the same or buying back, then again, you can have this calculator and make that assumption for yourself and see where your numbers lie. But understand that based on that, my numbers and your numbers are going to be completely different. So here's the thing. I have to take into account the past five years. So I am going to put now the low assumption for the projected share price guys at, I'm going to be nice, negative 10%. All right. That means that they're going to issue shares at negative 10%. Now for the median assumption, I kid you not, I'm going to put zero. <laughs> I'm going to put zero. And then for the highest assumption, normally I would put 10, but I'm going to go with like three. All right. Now with this, we get the target share prices of $80 to $104, not adjusting for debt. And then adjusting for debt, 161 to 208. Now here's my question. What if I were to put this at, uh, let's just say negative 55 right? Or negative 50. That would be much better seeing that that's what they've been doing the past five years. It's a little bit much, but even with that, even with 50, assuming a 10% revenue growth, this would be $55 and 64 cents. And then adjusting for debt, 112 guys, this company is looking insane. Now with a margin of safety of five, 10 and 15 with that 50% share issuing, we got $95. And then with a 14% revenue increase in a 3% share buyback, almost $200. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy, man. You were not kidding when you said, am I missing? Like, I, I like how you were questioning, am I missing something? Because they have no debt. I think their PE was like 15 when you, when, uh, when you originally asked this, but I'm so, I'm so sorry. It got picked last, but, um, man, if you took it, if you, if you use this calculator, guys, I'm, I'm serious. I give them out for free. If you did that and you pulled the trigger on it, man, I, I really do wish you the best of luck. I really, really do because this company does have a lot of potential. It really, really does. And I hope you have conviction because honestly, this calculator right now is telling me a hundred plus dollars and the current price is 45 and I'm fairly certain you bought it a lot lower. So again, not guaranteed returns. None of it is. This isn't financial advice. Calculator isn't 100% proof either that it will work, but it'll give you a guide. And that guide is a lot of help, right? It's, it's a lot of help. And assuming that you bought this at 20, what was it? $29 or something like that. You're doing pretty good right now, my man. You're doing, even if you buy it at like 30 or 31, you're doing very, very good right now. And if this thing actually does come true, $200, if they buy back shares at 3%, which isn't a lot, and they increase the revenue 14%, which is a lot lower than what Seeking Alpha is saying at almost 20%. So congratulations. Let's, let's actually see it. I'm very, very curious. If I were to put 20% on here, hey man, if you pull the trigger on this, I wish you the best of luck. This is not financial advice, guys. Every investment is the value of all future cash flow. And please do not wait for me to do the companies that you recommend, all right? Because there's a lot of companies. There's other stuff I need to work on as well, right? I mean, we got earnings. We got live streams. We got CPI. We got to do all this stuff. So I give these calculators out for free for that reason, all right? Please use them. Please uh, make your own due diligence. This is not due diligence. All right, this is not due diligence. I didn't even take a look at the earnings. And even when I do, it's still not in full. So please make that decision for yourself. It's not financial advice. Use these calculators. And if you would like to support the channel, if you would like to support what we do, the best thing that you can do it is like, subscribe, comment, and share. All right, like, subscribe, comment, and share. That last one's super important. Only thing we're asking for is just help us grow the channel. That's really it, guys. That's really it. Again, tomorrow, well, today, uh, Friday at around 6 30 p.m. So about two and a half hours after this comes out, we're going to have a live stream. We're going to do 
the earnings for JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. So if you would like to see it, make sure to stop by, say hi. Um, you know, if you if you if you can stay, great. If you can't, you can't. It's it's perfectly fine too. Greatly appreciate it, guys. We greatly appreciate it. So, with that said, let's move on into now the options chains. So here we have. I love how the camera always turns dark when it comes to this. But here we have, guys, the options chains for July 21st. You can see that on the put side, there's nothing. There's only one at strike of 45. That's it. On the call side, there's two. That's it. There's only two available. $47.50 and $50. And $50. That's it. Now, taking a look at the August 18th, so getting a little bit better. We can see here that on the put side, we got a nice range, honestly. And on the call side, we only, wow, we only got three. I thought this would, wow, there really isn't much of anything. Wow, there really isn't much of anything, man. Like above the current share price, there really isn't much of anything there. So, all right, here are the option chains for INMD. All in all, thank you so much, John, for the recommendation. Again, I think I did this company before, but I don't really remember it. I'm going to remember it now. I'm going to remember it, especially since I got this on the screen right now. So, you know, yeah, guys, this is this company is looking amazing. Main problem is the spikes. Aside from that, no debt. Love a company with no debt. That's just, oh, it's so great. So I personally like it. Am I going to invest in it? I would like to see what happens with those earnings this year, right? I really would like to see. But if you pull the trigger, then congratulations. Hopefully everything turns out well. That pretty much does it for this video. Y'all can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.